church backwards today. So now uh, I'm going to invite everybody to stand up to sing along with the peace song. No cowbell on the peace song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two, three, four. Let <clears throat> Wait, well, you have to you have to strum first so we yeah. get the keys. There you go. <laughs> let there be peace on earth and let it begin. Too. Uh, let's do the prayer for protection. I'll explain this in just a second. If you... All right. So together, let us affirm the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. All right. So... Um, so that some of this starts to make sense to some of you. If you didn't get the message, you can sit as you wish now. Um, we're now on to the benediction because we're doing service backwards today. And we'll explain that as we go along. So my benediction is, is that God is everywhere equally present even when we change the direction. And so uh, as part of the lesson that we're going to be doing today on uh, the first principle, which is there is only one power and presence in the universe, and that is God. Um, this becomes like one of those extra tools that we can will help us remember it. Be like, oh yeah, God's everywhere, even when we do it backwards. And uh, so this is an idea I got uh, a while back and, and we've been excited to do it. And we'll be looking at my script way more than normal because even though this was my idea, I'm like, wait, what are we doing next? So, um, so what we're doing next is, I don't see our worship assistant. I just realized that. Um, Anybody want to be the worship assistant today? All right, cool. All right, so uh, Ellie, our already planned worship assistant, uh, will come up now to, um, oh, yeah, to, uh, well, I can just do this first piece, which is where, where John and Candy are doing uh, their final song of the today first. Um, <laughs> And, and then in backwards order, Ellie will then come up and, uh, and tell you their bio and give you the announcements. So this is a song that John wrote, and he'll tell you a little bit about it. Yeah? Yeah, this is uh, kind of an encouraging song. Uh, it's called uh, Step Into What Scares You. And um, so... Um, Semi -autograph yeah. autobiographical. Yeah. <laughs>
played a country milkman with a recalcitrant cow. Step into what scares you. Don't worry about being rejected. Don't worry about looking a fool. Step into the unexpected. Sent a poem to a magazine. The New Yorker will like it right. Waited for the good news. Dreamed of my writer's fame at night. Letter came and it said, not this time, but thanks for submitting. I pinned it to the wall as a point of pride. A badge of honor, at least I tried. Step into what scares you. Don't worry about being rejected. Don't worry about looking a fool. Step into the unexpected. I can still see the MC at comedy open mic, shilling drink specials to the crowd. She'll say my name right out loud. Run away, let someone else get laughs. Me, I'm too scared by half. But I didn't run, she said my name. Stepped into the light, never the same. Stepped into what scares you. Don't worry about being respected. Don't worry about looking a fool. Step into the unexpected. Step into what scares you. Don't worry about being respected. Don't worry about looking a fool. Step into the unexpected. Well, thank you. Good morning. <laughs> this is, although I've already been up here, I've already done this, and uh, the, you're asking a confused person to do a confused thing. So, um, <laughs> so he hands me the script, right? So I'm going, okay, I gotta go to the back and then go back up like this. No, they wrote it backwards, so you can. <laughs> okay, so the John and Candy Band. I feel like I'm having deja vu or something. <laughs> We'll be providing music, actually they just did, <laughs> at Unity of Greensboro on Sunday, September 24th. I'm, I'm thinking that's today. <laughs> the duo is made up of Reverend John Connor and Candy Bartling Connor, who's an LUT licensed Unity teacher. We are very fortunate to have a LUT here besides Shirley White. They have performed at several Unity churches and also play acoustic songs from the 70s as well as standards at music venues around the triad and in Texas. Okay, the announcement is your first time you're here or haven't been here in a long time and have received a welcome bag. I see some new visitors. Did you get a bag? Oh. It's a packet. It's a packet, excuse me. It's a yeah, packet. It's a packet bag. I'll, I'll cross this out and put in the right word. Um, fill out the visitor connection card, if you would, please, and give it to an usher whenever tithing happens. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so that we may stay connected. If you haven't received a packet, just raise your hand, and we do have a gift for you. Thank you. Thank you, Suki. So EFT, remember who you are. I am doing this this Wednesday on Zoom, 6.30, and it's based on Abraham's Hicks Rampages. So remember who you are. It's, it's fun. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to put together because I take her rampages and then we put them into EFT tapping. So, um, Can you tell people that don't know what her rampages are? Her rampages are, well, this one is remember who you are. So it's, a, it's words, affirmations that she puts together about either remembering who you are, how great you are, um, 
things that support you in your life and this this way with the tapping gates gets integrated and reinforced okay good <laughs> I don't say I don't see any confused looks out there anymore all right so the key to yourself is unlock the law of attraction in your life with Reverend Sharon Medley now the law of attraction that's kind of what Abraham Hicks is based on too and that's going to start this Tuesday no. um, the following Tuesday, October 3rd through November 7th. And that's going to be 6.30 to 8.30 on Zoom. And that's a special treat, a very special treat with her. So in the key to yourself, you will find a concise, easy-to-use guide to unlocking the law of attraction in your life. Registration, which you can do in the back with our lovely new assistant, um, is... $65 and can be done online or like I say in the back so let our chaplains pray with you after the service and will the available chaplains raise their hand you guys have Rod and Candy and Shirley and Reverend Wally good so there's a room across the hall and another upstairs where you can practice affirmative prayer in private with one of these trained praying ministers okay so that's it for me and it looks like rod is next Actually, unless he's I mean, not I just realized that this whole section we didn't get it fully reversed <laughs> so it's me hi i realized this whole section just got got pasted in but in the normal order so um uh let us together do the offertory blessing so that's going to be like a couple of slides and we'll come back to it yeah that yeah. if join me in affirming this Unity in Greensboro is abundantly blessed. Creative people are drawn to us. Divine ideas flow through us. Financial resources bless us. And we accomplish mighty works together. And then we'll do the short version of the thank you song while you all um, collect before the invitation. We're doing this backwards, folks. Enjoy the ride. Sing along with me. Thank you, God, for everything. 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 And now Rod will come up. Thank you. <laughs> well, be prepared for anything today. So there are actually four ways you could give. One is to text the word GIVE to 336 and follow the prompts for that. A second way is to donate from the UIG website uh, or the Facebook page. Both have links for donations. A third way would be Venmo at unity-greensboro. And my favorite way is actually my personal bill pay where I have automated my, my payments every month. I mean, you could pay weekly if you want to, whatever works for you. I have complete control. I can change it up and down as my income levels change. Uh, and the banks love that. Uh, it makes us look stronger. We have more people giving that way with consistent giving, which would help us get a, our own place one day that we perhaps own instead of rent. Um, also, that process of just seeing that money go out of my bank account reminds me to be grateful for all that is here, for the events, for the support. Uh, for the people that are like-minded, I can talk about anything that perhaps other associates don't relate to so easily. Uh, and the music is inspiring, always. So if you like the music or the message, and if you want to help spread the, the love through the world, I uh, encourage you to consider giving to this community, as you have just done, perhaps. So, with that... It's been blessed. The ushers can return to wherever they came from. <laughs> and please welcome Wally.
Thank you, everybody. Um, oh, I'm about to forget to put the timer out. I should not do that backwards, or who knows what time we'd finish. Um, where is the timer? There we go. Um, so I will start because we're, we're at, you know, we added this back in today, even though we don't have the tables for breakfast and all that. Um, does anybody want coffee that doesn't have it? Because if so, feel free to get up and go get some. I will not be offended. Uh, if you have a coffee cup and you just wished you'd gotten some more before I started talking, go get your coffee because then you'll be woke up. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're going to keep adding to that. And, you know, if you think of it, you're like, well, I would have loved to participate, but I don't drink coffee. I only I wish I had some tea. Then help us figure out the tea part. As I said to Ellie, I'm willing to bring in the mugs that I've got available that when you finish the mugs, the dirty mugs, there's a, a box back there. You can put them in there. I'll take them home, throw them in my dishwasher. Don't be like, oh, Wally's washing all the dishes. I'm literally sticking it in a dishwasher. I promise you I'm not doing them by, all by hand. Um, so, you know, we'll add to it, and, and then you guys can, you know, bring in more stuff. You're like, oh, I wish they had such and such. Let your wish be your command. Um, <laughs> that should be a lesson, too. Let your wish be your command. Um, so... Uh, what are we talking about today? You know, it's, uh, I, I talk to people about how I often will get an idea for a Sunday lesson and um, I, I get excited and I pre-plan out. So it's usually at least two months uh, before it makes it onto the calendar. Um, this past Wednesday, I was like, let me go ahead and get my title. My, I didn't have all my uh, descriptions. I had titles, but not all the descriptions for October. And then I realized I was already halfway through November's titles. So let me finish that. And then I just went ahead and did December too. So, um, you know, they get planned out uh, further in advance. And yet there, nothing's by mistake because this lesson about God is everywhere, even when you change the direction, and direction is about order, now takes place in the month that we celebrate our 12, one of our 12 powers of order, which is our power of balance and our, our, our order of organization. That like when we're like, oh, everything's just so um, out of place, I just don't know what to do. We have the power to like, not just do it because we're people and you know we can, Go about doing this we can stop and take a breath and we have the spiritual power in us that helps us do that organizing that helps us get you know whatever together that helps us when we're feeling like everything's oh this day is just crazy i can't get everything and frankly it was that a little i ran back upstairs a couple of times a day and went on to facebook 10 minutes later than normal for the you know remind people and it's like you can let that be like this day is uh, you know gone to pot already and there's nothing you can do about it first part may be true the second part complete lie it's just can totally incorrect there is always something we can do about it and what we the first thing we can do is just stop and take a breath right and then what we teach in unity about order is like metaphysically what they'll say in unity is that order is mind idea expression which means um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the biblical terminology for that is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, which is that mind with the capital M, which we're attached to, that God presence is that within us. And then we get these ideas and then we allow the manifestations to happen and, and we uh, allow ourselves to participate as the hands and feet of God as we need to, right? So it's always, I, I say that the spiritual lesson of order is just simply God first. That when you feel like something's out of whack, that you feel like you need a little more organization, that you say, I'm just not good at organizing. I wish so-and-so would come help me. Well, have any of y'all either said that or had somebody say that to you? I can't even tell you. That. Well, I just wish somebody would come help me organize this closet. It's your stuff. Take it out and organize. You know, it's like, don't say you can't do it because that you can do anything, anything. Like, you may need to reach out and get some assistance and some help. But don't start by saying, well, I can't do it. Say, I, you know, say it would really help me if someone joined me in this, right? But you start by taking the breath and recognizing your own divinity, recognizing that God is not somewhere out there that you've got to pray and see if you can find the phone number to, to call or text now and be like, hey, God, can you stop by here sometime today? 
already there, hadn't left, was there before you got there, will be there after we're all gone, already there, wherever the there is, right? And so when you take that moment to connect to your own divinity, to connect to that, that's the first step of whatever order, whatever balance, organization, anything like that, that you'll do later. So like when I first got the idea to talk about this and to do service backwards, uh, like that had that didn't even come into play in it. It took longer to realize. Oh wait, we're doing this in the month that we really celebrate order. You know, the, it, the month of order is what we would say September is, and yet um, September and every month is every power because the powers are there for us to use. You know, it, they're not they're not superhero powers. They're not supernatural powers. They may be actually somewhat so supernatural. You know, it's more than just the normal natural human experience of it, right? But it's not some magical thing. It's just these tools to remind us who we are. I also like to call it the, the 12 parts of, of the Christ mind that is also us, right? So it's just like, oh, well, okay, I'm one with God. That's fine. You know, um, the Christ was not a man also called Jesus. Jesus actually was showing us how to use the Christ that's within all of us. And it's like, then that feels really big. It's like, wait, so I'm supposed to use what Jesus used. I mean, cause whatever he did, he did it so well. They're talking about him thousands of years later. And, um, and I met some people five minutes ago that don't remember my name, you know, but, um, but so, you know, it's like, yeah. So it's like, how can I do what Jesus did? Forget about the Christ part. How can I use the Christ that is within me and accept that that's as much 100% equally as in me as it was in Jesus? Now, how do I use something that seemingly mystical and big? And that's where you break out the 12 powers. And if, you, if you're new and you don't know what the 12 powers are, I, I can get it to you on Google. I'll send I'll email you stuff later, but you know, they're all helpful and order is one of them. So that's what we'll say on that. So there's a number of sayings that all say the same thing, but I, I I've heard in multiple different ways, which is God is everywhere. God is everywhere equally present. There is no spot where God is not. I don't know if Johnny Coleman is the first one to say it, but I think she may have worded it the best, like she emoted it the best, you know, but, um, and, uh, God is all there is. So, uh, here's an exercise that many of you may have heard before and, and hopefully some of you haven't. So this will be a new experience. Um, repeat this after me and we're getting it down to what's step one of order God, right? So, uh, repeat after me as I say this, God is all there is. I'd like to try that one more time where y'all actually mean it for yourself and you're not just saying my word. So let's do that one more time. Like you actually mean it for yourself. And if you don't, don't, you know, don't, then don't. Um, all right. God is all there is. God is all there is. That is way better. Um, God is all there. God is all there. God is all. God is all. God is. God. Just God. That's all there is. God. God is all there is. And yet we're all here. So how is that possible? How is it possible that God is all there is? And yet there's however many people that are in this room. We all look different. We've all had different life experiences. We're all expressing life in different ways. And yet we're all part of that same piece. I think Eric Butterworth described this the best when he compared how we're each individual expressions of God, and yet we're all still part of the one God in the same way that a wave, it's got its own name, it's a wave, and yet it's, st it's still, it's just the ocean. The, the, a wave is ocean, and yet we, it's like, look at that wave, that's a small wave, that's a big wave, that's a tidal wave. They're all ocean. And so you can look at us, oh, well, look at, you know, that person's in a really high position in government. They're like, they're, that's an important person. And nobody ever heard of this, you know, baby that was just born. Nobody even knows they're here yet. You know, it's like equal God, equal God. So that allows us, you know, when people say, and honestly, it, it often sounds condescending to me when people are like, no, I, I don't see a difference in people. Um, I, you know, I, I think the president of the company is just important as a janitor. 
I don't think that you do think that because you just pointed out that you think the janitor is something different than the president of the, you know, right? So then that's fine. Like within a structure of a company, there is different responsibilities and different all that stuff. But this goes beyond that. That's when we look at metaphysical. Meta just means beyond. So it's beyond the physical. It's beyond what the normal human experience of it is. And so that's where it's like, yeah, in the company, the, the president may, if we're all standing on a ladder, the CEO, the president is standing on the top because theoretically they're the most responsible for what's going on and kind of checking what everybody else is doing because they're kind of slightly responsible that every job gets done even though other people are doing them, right? And so, but that's for a company. When we're talking about spirituality, we are all one. That's the saying that, that has helped me. And I, I said it every Sunday for probably 16 years um, in LA. But when I was like really depressed about something or just feeling really challenged of how to get through something, and I, I'd go hiking on my, the trails in Los Angeles and, and I'd be walking on my own, I'd put an earbud in with my phone so it looked like I was talking to somebody, you know, so it wasn't clear I was talking to out just out loud. It'd be, I wasn't talking to myself, I was talking to God, but you know, that disturbs some people. So, you know, if you just put an ear pod in, then they just think you're talking on the phone and then you can talk as much as you want to. And I'd be walking up that trail and I'm like, I am one with God, I am one with all people, I am one with all life, I am one with the one. I am one with God. I am one with all people, right? And I would just keep saying it over and over. And then sometimes I'd have to break that down. I'd be like, God, I am one with the one. I'm one with the one because there ain't but one. There's only one. There's one presence in the entire universe, and I'm one with that. And so all those people that are walking towards me right now, I'm one with them too. Now, see, if I didn't have the ear pod in, somebody would dial 911 and say, there's a crazy man that probably needs some help, right? But you put the ear pod in, you can act as crazy as you want to. Um, or you live alone, you know, that, that one too, that one works really well. You, you know, I told you I'd do concerts sometimes at midnight at my house. Um, but so, um, so the first principle, the way unity words it, I got their word, although frankly, this is the way unity worldwide d does it. If you were to hop out of here and go visit a whole bunch of different unity churches today, you would probably hear slightly different wording of the, our wording is different than this one. Um, but they all say the same thing. So first principle is there is only one presence and one power active as the universe and as my life, God, the good omnipotence. So that's what we're talking about. And, and when we are like, I don't know what's going on. This is all happening. This is not the way it normally happens, right? That's why doing a service backwards matters. All the ingredients are here. Hopefully, we'll all leave with whatever it is that we want. You're, you know, you're still going to get some songs that you'll sing along with or sing fully on. You'll get a, a message of some, hopefully I'll say something that you walk out of here with, right? All the pieces are there. It's just the puzzle is going to come out different than maybe what got pre-cut, right? Because in life, we can do that. And if we, when we hit that moment of... Well, this is not supposed to happen yet that we can take a breath and say, but that's okay. I'm, I'm a partnered up with God so I can work any of this out regardless of what's going on, regardless of what direction there, there is no spot where I'm not fully active and present with God. It's the only thing that changes that is if I get focused on the problem and it's not that God's not then currently present. It's that I'm just not. I'm focused in on something that isn't God, that can't be defined as God, which is problem, which is trouble, which is challenge, right? That we, we call upon the presence of God that is with us to help us figure out how to overcome a challenge. But God's not the challenge. When people say, well, you know, this bad thing happened. Well, I guess it was just God's will. No, it is your will, right? Because if you're accepting it as the finished product, that's our choice, right? So it's, um, you know, if we hit a place where we're like, well, I just was disappointed that that's the way it worked out. Well, it's not done working out because it never is done working out. Whatever the it is, we're always going on, right? Life always has been, life always will be. So 
we're good, right? So if we're in the moment of I'm not happy with this situation, just don't put a period on it. If you put a period on it, accept that you're choosing to put a period on it. And that may be the thing to do, right? We'll use divorce as, as an example. Sometimes you hit a point where you're like, we really need to work a little bit harder because uh, we're going through a bumpy spot in our relationship and, and we need to buckle down and, and get through this together. And there's great value in that. And sometimes you get to that spot and you're like, the best way to move on to great happiness is you should keep on that path that you're on and I'm going to keep on my path too. And it turns out we've now reached the fork in the road. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'm going to bless you. And, you know, and, and we all know examples of people. We don't have to be self-confessional here. We can blame it on somebody else, right? We all know somebody that, that when they finally reach that point where like, yeah, we, we decided to part ways. It's like, yeah, we knew that for the last year that this wasn't working, right? Uh, you know, but when you're in it, you know, and you think, oh, well, I just need to do this or I just... Right. So that I mean, it's always up to us to figure out. It's always up for us to make the final decision. So we can't say, oh, well, they made me do blah, blah, blah. You know, we get to make the final choice for ourselves. Is this something I want to stay in through the bumpy part of the road? Do I do I see this as something that is just a bumpy part of the road or do I see that we've reached the end of this season? Uh, we, we're shifting from, from summer to fall, and sometimes it's time for some people to fall off of us, right? You know, you know and it's like what it's making those choices, and that's not a bad thing either, right? Because fall is just going to kind of clear the slate, and then we're going to have our restful, dormant time of winter, and then new life is going to grow in the spring. We're not guessing about that. We know. Like, there's a pattern of it, and just as it happens in nature, we're not any different than the rest of life. Like it's happening in us. Those one of our cycles as well. So one of the other examples that comes from the Bible on this lesson is in Jeremiah 23, uh, chapter 23, and it's verses 23 and 24. It says, I am a God who is everywhere and not in one place only. No one can hide where I cannot see them. Uh, do you not know that I am everywhere in heaven and on earth? That's That seems like... like I pers I'll just talk about me. I've been in a church where that was a threat. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, you can't go hide over there and do the bad stuff because God will see you and then going to strike you down. Right? Uh, you know, but it, this is just saying, hey, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter not just in a geographical location or, or geographic. Yeah, did I say that right? Um, uh, but like just in a mental state of, oh, I'm having a really hard day. Well, you're still fully present with God in this moment. So don't allow yourself to sit in the dark. You don't have to turn the light bulbs on, but, but allow your light to shine like the so song says, right? That's your, your light is always shining, but it's up to us to choose to consciously recognize it in any given moment. And so that's, that's that lesson of like, uh, there's no spot where God can't see you because wherever you are, God is, right? Because... God's not, you know, the friendly or mean old man sitting on a cloud. God is, is wherever all of us is. The very best of whatever we think the best of anything is, is God. Happy, joy, all of those things. And we can call upon that. And there may be a moment that what you need to do, say you're, you're grieving the death of someone, that you got to clear out that, those tear ducts and let those tears run. But you can do that and 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 not accept the depth of the grief like accept that you're feeling this grief because of the amount of love that has been present and so now and now if you're recognizing that it ever was present you can recognize you know it's possible because you've already experienced it and and grab hold of that and keep moving that doesn't mean that you still won't go through a grieving process of disconnecting from someone who's left the physical plane but you we can all do it in a way. I remember um, when Della Reese's daughter died, um, I, I don't think anybody expected her to come to church that Sunday. I forget what day of the week, but it was midweek or something. Um, I don't, and she came marching right in. And as she spoke, she said, um, 
that because of this grief that she was going through, you know, the mother's not supposed to bury the child, right? That she now felt she would now always feel things more deeply because she had reached a new depth and that, you know, she had a greater understanding because this had stretched out her realization of stuff and her emotional part. And so that's true for all of us in our own ways. You don't have to go through that kind of a devastating grief piece to recognize I have real depth. And when I think I've hit the bottom of where I can go, I, I can stretch it out. And that's not to like go lower, but it's to recognize that you can stretch it out and that there's always a ladder to help you climb up because it's not even a ladder. It's just recognizing your light and that will help you rise up, right? The last question I'll ask is that, um, are your thoughts and actions aligned with the principle of God? And principle is just that, like that foundational truth, right? Principle is a word that we use for God it's also principle is like what we use the belief of to for all of our decisions for all of our beliefs like it goes back to this i know is true and now i build off of that so when we're having that bad day moment i i like the way abraham hicks uh explains this in that you're just not aligned with your truth in that moment and so you you know it it feels bad because it's not a god moment it's not a lot you know it's a human expression moment that's not working for you and that's okay you can be like oh i see i just need to get reconnected to my truth where all things work for my good all the time and so if i'm in a moment of a challenge i just know just like any other storm that may roll through here this next week at some point the rain will stop and the sun will shine again so if i'm in a rainy moment let me just find shelter let, and that shelter emotionally is just in recognizing your truth and just setting and and finding things to be thankful for and and using your affirmations in that way and recognizing that and going back to that order piece of god first and that's the good news of this lesson of god is everywhere regardless of whether we do this service in the normal order of service that's in your program or we ask you to just go from the bottom to the top or, or next week we come back in and say hey we're going to start in the middle right we're, like that stuff is like god is always present because no matter what spot you're starting from if you leave here today and say i'm going to drive home in a different direction still going to get home right in in the decision making god will always be first even if you change the direction because god is always always equally evenly present i love you i bless you i behold the christ that absolutely is you and thank you for being here today now let me find out what happens next <laughs> and now i will uh invite up rod to do our our prayer box and meditation and we don't have nana here today so someone else maybe bring up the prayer box Thank you, Wally. So I will be as a prayer chaplain at the back of the room after the service. Uh, as you noticed earlier, we have several chaplains here. You're invited to contact any of us if you feel you would like some prayer support. To be included in the prayer list, we do have a form for those who are here at the back table, which can be filled out before or after the service. There's also links on the website. For that as well uh, so we're going to start with a prayer and then we're going to flow into meditation so because that just kind of flows continuously uh not in reverse on that segment but uh, i think it's just go ahead and prepare yourself for the meditation be sure your spine is straight that you feel your sit bones that, you know everything is aligned and we're going to do one other thing at least i'm going to do it you can if you want and that's just sale for you i <laughs> see Keep the prayer box. So if you can shake both hands, just move them around. You know, the, the idea is that our, whatever we do with our body affects our mind and our mind affects our body. So just relaxing with both hands, I can do the other hand here so I'm balanced. And you can do things like this when you're pre preparing to meditate at home. There's, uh, in fact, I'll be um, 
showing some of these techniques on the third Wednesday of October when we do uh, the next meditation session that the prayer chaplains typically do. So that should help you just, just now that you put your hands in your lap and just notice, just kind of relax and notice whatever you notice. You might feel some energy there. And so as we go deeper and we set our intentions to connect with the divine presence, the field of the heart, our inner knowing, our truth. We add to this intention the following prayer request. Joan Clapp, Sarah Henning, family of Doris Schwenk, Robin Satterfield, Deborah Parker, the family of Jim Soka. We envision everyone finding their highest picture of truth, their strongest faith, surrounded by the healing light, where physical energy and etheric bodies are purified. We allow all false beliefs to fall away with grace. This moment there is only love. This moment there is life. Imagination runs free to envision perfect health, to feel the divine connection with God, to experience abundance in all levels of being. We release all obstacles of thought and belief. We imagine life as we prefer it. And we take time to see it, to feel it, to experience it as it is here now. Simply let it in, letting it unfold. And in this moment, all is well. We are in the point of beginning, knowing that divine power resides in us. Allness is responding to our vibration. We are channels for healing the world. And we are willing to become the Christ spirit in action. Now claiming the unity of life, we send our loving energy to include ourselves and everyone in raising our awareness of truth, of freedom, of faith and miracles, knowing that wisdom is within. Love is what we are. And we are all blessed with life's miracles. And truly all is well. Continuing in silence with these truths as our focus. Simply breathe in. I am. Breathe out. Love. Should the mind wander, simply shift your focus back to the breath, back to the stillness within.
beyond all sensation is the I am. Focus on I am. I allow God to reveal itself. I am the presence expressed. And when we return, we return with supreme peace, with inspired energy, feeling love permeate every cell. So begin to notice the body, your feet, your hands, your breath, returning better than before, and open your eyes. So just a quick reminder, on the third Wednesday of every month, uh, one of the chaplains will be doing some, so, some form of meditation. We encourage you to participate. And this is the time when we have more music, I believe. So please welcome our musicians back. Uh, so this is a song, it's been around for a while. And um, it applies to everyone, whether you are two or 82 or 102. So if you recognize it, feel free to sing along. <clears throat> May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others. And let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung, and may you stay. May you grow up to be righteous. May you grow up to be true. May you always know the truth and see the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous. Stand upright and be strong. And may you stay.
Thanks for singing along, too. Bring my forever young person up here. But thank you, that was beautiful. You know, one of the things I've been sitting there realizing, Reverend Wally, today is confusing as it's been for me. I, I, I work really hard on being structured. <laughs> and so this is like discombobulating for me. But, but what I see is that in being structured um, and having my list and finding a purpose, that if I wasn't to get out of bed when I wanted to, and if I didn't check off everything in that list, and if I didn't get, if I stayed in bed, that God is there too. And, you know, it kind of, it gives me a little sigh of relief that, you know, I don't have to beat myself up so bad, that that actually is an option not to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. And good morning and welcome home. <laughs> I'm going to ask you all to repeat after me. If you're watching us virtually, please type this in the comments. You can do it. <laughs> so look around at your neighbors and repeat after me. Good morning. Good morning. I love you this morning. And I sure do appreciate your being here. I sure you being here. To our virtual church family, please know we are saying to that to you as well. And help us grow this loving community by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our pages. So with that, let's do our affirmations for September. I celebrate my God-given ability to organize, balance, sequence, and adjust to life's flow. Order is present in my world. My prayer is focused on positive outcomes for my life, world, and affairs. I believe it, and so it is. And now for the daily word reading. Divine life lives as me. I am whole and well. When I am expecting a healing, a healing need, I focus my thoughts beyond illness and discomfort. Even as I seek treatment for the injury or illness, I see myself whole. I remember that I am created in the image according to the likeness of God. I know my life is God's life, living as me. Divine life fills every cell, strengthens every muscle, bone, and organ, and quickens every nerve in my body. It restores perfect order to all my body's functions, releasing and replacing anything unlike itself. When someone asks me to pray with them, I do not ask about their symptoms or circumstances. I affirm the healing activity of divine life in each one with whom I pray. I see them as the spiritual beings they are, whole and well. And according to John 1, 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And now we have the call to worship song. Maybe. Actually, we are going to do one thing. I, I got a text. Why is the minister reading text in church? Because I needed to. Because there was a prayer request that came in. And so uh, let's just take a moment to add into prayer and uh, without needing conditions, right, to recognize the, uh, 
the truth of well-being for, for Chip and his wife, Denise, and his, his mother-in-law, Lorraine Johnson, uh, who is having a challenging morning. So if we can just take that moment in just exactly what that reading was just saying, we don't need to know conditions. What we need to do is stand with them in the truth of their being, of being whole and perfect and complete, knowing that whoever needs to be involved in helping them this morning is available to them and that everything is working in a way to comfort and to care and to take care of. We affirm this, we let it be well, we let it be so, and we claim that so it is. All right, so uh, if you will stand up and join me in singing our call to worship song, I, I realized as I was sitting over there, uh, this is a new experience for some people who always miss this part. So you get to sing along uh, in this. So uh, God in everything, this is our last Sunday singing this song. I see joy, I see peace, I see goodness surrounding me. I see love in every breath I breathe. I see God in everything. I see happiness, I see freedom. I see the beauty that lives in me. I see perfection in what life brings. I see God in everything. I feel joy, I feel peace, I feel goodness surrounding me, I feel love in every breath I breathe, I feel God in everything, I feel happiness, I feel freedom, I feel the beauty that lives in me, I feel perfection in what life brings, I feel God in everything. I choose joy, I choose peace, I choose goodness surrounding me, I choose love in every breath I breathe, I choose God in everything, I choose happiness, I choose freedom, I choose the beauty that lives in me, I choose perfection in what life brings, I choose God in everything. I know joy, I know peace, I know goodness surrounding me, I know love in every breath I breathe, I know God's in everything, I know happiness, I know freedom, I know the beauty that lives in me, I know perfection in what life brings, I know God's in everything. I know God's in everything. And in that same way of perfect order, I just decided we were doing this backwards, but what a perfect way to end a service about God is everywhere equally present. God is in everything. And let us end with our opening prayer. And it's still called an opening prayer because we're opening ourselves up into the day that we're about to walk into as we leave here today. So in this time, I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable. Ah, just to take a breath in and release, allowing yourself to relax into being fully present in this moment, in this moment of prayer, in this moment of connection, saying thank you, God, for this day, exactly like it is. The beautiful sun is shining. The day is before us as we move forward. We get to go have fun. We get to feel blessed where we find it. We get to open ourselves up to new experiences, to new thoughts, and to the comfort of the old ones where those serve us best. We say thank you for this day and for this life and for everything. And in this moment, we claim that we are opening ourselves up to the life that we are meant to live. And with that, we let it be well. We let it be so. And so it is. And amen. And now um, I reverse back to what we normally end on. I will tell you that next Sunday, 
Um, let's see if I have the title of it. Um, the title of, of next Sunday's lesson is called The First Followers. Miranda will be giving the lesson next Sunday. Um, Many of you know that she was going through the ministerial process, too. She did her testing for the field process, and they recommended her for immediate licensing after mentor visit. She has the same. Yes, applaud that. Miranda has the same mentor that I have, and he was already here in May. So he's counting that as his visit, but he needed her to do a Sunday lesson that he can watch. So this will be that next Sunday. And after that, she will fulfill the requirements that's needed for her to become Reverend Miranda. So please, I'll be here. Please be here to support Miranda as she gives that lesson next Sunday. And Anita will be doing the music as well. All right. I love you. I bless you. Go have a beautiful day on purpose. Take care.